Hey, this is Jay from A Stitch in Time in Bemidji, Minnesota, back for another lesson on the BES4 software. And this morning we're going to be looking at one of the features called Name Drops. It's a simple, easy to use feature, but there's some little quirks and things you need to know about it, how to make the most out of it. This is something you're not going to use every day, but sometimes you'll have a whole bunch of bags or shirts or things that you'll want to have done all with the same logo, but different names on all of them. And this is a quick way of making that work. So to start with that, we're going to add a design. We're just going to use the uh, Queen's Crown this morning. And so I'm going to go down here to um, Designs. I'm going to scroll down here to pick up the crown. Now two things here. If I just click once, it'll bring in the crown as it was digitized. And this is important because if I click and drag, I can make this crown much bigger. But the problem is you can also end up with stitching that's not going to look good. So just be aware of that. Uh, it's a little warning they have put in there. And I just want you to be aware of that because if you just click once, it'll put it in at, the, at its native size. But if you um, just if you click and drag, you can make it whatever size you want. I'm going to click Undo by going up here to the left-hand green arrow. And that removes that second uh, crown. Now, let's say I wanted to put a crown on all of the bags that we're going to do, but I want to put different names underneath them. And it's very simple to do this. I go up here to the name, and we can use some of the different ones here, just so we could make them all the, all the same. But the straight lines are the ones that I find work best for this. I'm going to click down in here, and I'm going to just start typing Jenny. And then I will click Apply on the lower right-hand corner and that turns it into, into stitches. Now I can just, by when I put my hand over top of that where I see the little crosshairs, I can click and I can drag this. But again, remembering our alignment tools, there's a quick way to make sure these are perfectly aligned up. One of the biggest things when you're doing name drop is you want to start with the longest name first. So if I wanted, if I knew I was going to have a name like Elizabeth in here, I would change that and I would choose the longest name first. That way you make sure that it fits. Like if you're trying to put it in a circle or something, you're going to make sure that it fits. And then I will take this and I want to align these two up so they're perfectly straight above each other. And the way I do that is I go up to Arrange and I'm going to click Select and I'm going to drag a box to select everything in here that I want. It's going to have everything here. And then I go up to and I say Horizontal Center and it automatically lines it up perfectly. So that's a really uh, nice way of making this happen. Now, name drop. So now I'm going to go back over here to the Home tab at the top again, and notice that my name drop button is all lit up. And so now what I can do, it recognizes that there is a design and there is a section of text, and this is called like a placeholder text. And so when I click name drop, it brings up this this little um, screen here and notice it already has Elizabeth, the font height, and the font name, everything here. And I'm going to add another name. We're going to go Julie. We're going to add another one. It's going to say Jenny. And let's say we're going to go Jackie. And we're going to get them all in there. Now, one of the things with this is that uh, I, it says, where do you want to put this to? And I'm gonna I'm gonna change it to a folder that I created on the my desktop called BES4 class, and that's where I'm gonna put it to go. You could set it right to your USB stick on your machine, you know. So you could click this, and if you have a um, a USB stick plugged in, it would show up right down here, and um, then you could send it right to your um, stick to go to uh, the machine, or if you have um, Wi-Fi. There's a way we can work with that as well here. I'm going to click Cancel. And then the base file name. What do you want each of the files to start with? So if this is going to be the Queen, the Queen Club, I don't qualify for that, so my name's not in here. We're going to start. So it's going to be Queen Elizabeth, Queen Julie, Queen Jenny, Queen Jackie, and so on. And it says, do you want to open up all these files or just open up the first file or do not open any files? And if you have 30 files, you don't necessarily want to open them all because it's going to open up 30 tabs across here. But if there's something you need to tweak and you want to verify every single one of them, or you want to send them all wirelessly 
uh, to your machine, this is what you will have to do is open all files. And I'm going to open them today just so that you can see them all and see how they all work. And then what format do you want to save it in? save them in. If you're going to be tweaking it and want to come back and maybe change the size of the crown, um, change the font or things like that, you may want to save this as BRF, which is the software format for BES4. But if you're pretty certain this is exactly what you want, you can change this by clicking these three little dots here, your option button, and say what do you want. And you can do it as Brother PES version 10, or you can do, uh, if you're using one of the multi needles, you can use that one. It includes some extra data that the multi needles use for trims and cuts and things like that. Or the rest of the BS4, or any of the other brand names that are out there. So you can also do this for a friend. Today we're going to do just um, PES9. And notice how I can select it as several files. So I can save them as both. So I can come back and tweak it again, but I'll still have those in there. I'm going to uncheck that one just because the class today. And now I'm going to click OK. And everything else is set here, so I'm going to click Save. And now look what happened here. We have Queen, I'm going to close this out here. We have Queen Elizabeth, we have Queen Julie, we have Queen Jenny, and we have Queen Jackie. And it's all lined them up perfectly in the center, and they're all ready to go. And so if I had sent this to my USB stick, I could simply unplug it from my computer, go plug it into my machine, and the, I would have four different files in there, and I can just embroider them one at a time. So it's a handy way of working with it. There's one thing that you really need to know about when you're doing name drops, is that name drops only work if there's one section of text. So if I had text other places here, like this one, uh, which I just just made up for a little fun here. Notice that my name drops is not highlighted. And the reason for that is, is that it's reading two things of text. So I'm going to actually have to um, change this. And the way I'm going to do this, I'm going to go select. There's a little workaround that you can do. And I'm going to select both those things of text. And if, I, if you look over here, you can click on them. No, hold back up here. Um, if you look at it here, you notice that these are set as text. And so I could go in here and I could click on this and I could change my font. But if I wanted to make a third row of text, I need to change I need to convert these to stitches and so that it doesn't recognize these as text anymore. And the way you do that is you select and highlight it, right click on it, and then go down and left click on preserve as stitches. And now, if you look or if you expand your sequence view on the left, it doesn't show it as text, it shows the stitches. If I click on this, it doesn't give me the ability to change the font anymore. It's locked in as stitches. But now I can also go up to text and add another one, Jenny, and apply and straighten this back out and once again you'll see the name drops button is highlighted so again this is something that you're not going to use all the time but it's something that is really handy if you do any kind of work for businesses or if you're taking your family to disney world and you want to put labels on everything and you want to uh, have a little theme this is great if you are part of a quilt guild and you have a logo and you want to uh, make bags for everybody this is a really handy way of automatically lining up all those names and getting them all inserted into design perfectly. Well, that's our lesson for today. If you have any other questions, uh, feel free to comment in the comments below, and I'll try to respond to them as quickly as possible. It might be a few days as we are a busy little shop. Thanks much. See you in the next lesson.